Have you ever been fighting your weld? It doesn't seem like it's going the right direction where you want to go. It's not the machine and it's not you. It's something else called arc blow. Now likely if you're in welding school or you're getting started with welding, you may have seen it, but you've never heard it. Arc blow is a crazy little thing that happens as far as magnetic fields and it basically, dumb men's terms, it just doesn't make your arc go where you want it. It's a phenomenon that occurs when the welding arc deviates from the point of welding. Normally if we were trying to weld into this fillet weld, our arc is going to land right where we want it in this spot to form the weld. Well if there's any type of arc blow, what's going to happen is that arc may try to favor either maybe the top plate or the bottom plate, or it just seems to want to swirl around and just not want to cooperate and do anything that you ask it. When we're welding, because we're using electricity, there's some magnetic fields that occur inside the plate when we're welding, depending on a lot of where our ground is and the direction of travel we're doing. For example, with stick welding, if we're traveling this way and maybe we have our ground connected at this point, we have some looser magnetic fields as we move this direction, they start to get really, 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 really tight. So as we weld, we get to the end of our plate, and that's where you typically see a lot of this arc blow. You have that arc wandering around, throwing spatter and buckshot every direction, and you just don't know how to handle it. There are a few ways that you can fight arc blow. You can try to manipulate the electrode to fight the direction of that arc, or maybe you can shorten your arc length to really make sure that it can only go one direction. And at this point, we're just fighting it. You can weld away from the ground or weld towards the ground. You can wrap your leads around the plates. I mean, there's a couple old wives tales that say you can reverse all this stuff. Heck, you can even weld it on AC or just heat the snot out of it in order to get some of that magnetism out. But I've got a really simple trick that'll just remove that arc blow right away. Okay, so check it out. This is a perfect example of arc blow. As we work down our plate, We'll notice that all of a sudden this rod wants to act all kinds of crazy and we're going to get all this BBs and buckshot as that arc wandering. And if you've seen stick welding or any welding up close, it's just dropping these little bombs of metal. And if you can't direct those in the right spot, they don't go in the right spot. Remember, I said you can either do a few things. You can fight the manipulation with your electrode. You can get closer and try to smother the arc a little bit more to make it a little bit more focused. Say you got your ground right here. You can maybe try to weld away from your ground or weld towards your ground. There is such thing as forward and reverse arc blow. And that usually depends on where the flow of electricity is in the direction of welding. If you ever weld in a vertical position and say your ground is here and you're trying to weld up, you're not really welding away from it as much as you are uh, anything else. What we want to try to do is recreate this same arc blow but on a groove weld. I usually see arc blow a lot more times in a 1G or 2G weld and most of the time in welding schools because those grounds are usually fixed to a table in one location and you're not really able to move your ground or wrap it around the part that you're doing. If you can't move the ground, what do you end up doing? That's what we're gonna do on this plate here. Hopefully we get some arc blow. Huge shout out to our sponsors today, Aesop, Lincoln Electric, Cayman Gloves, Outlaw Leather. Be sure to go check those links down in the description below. We're gonna be using our Rebel EMP 285 at about 135 amps for our 7018 Excalibur Lincoln Electric rod. We're also gonna be making sure we got some solid gloves and a solid hood on. We got discounts down in those links below, guys. Make sure you go check it out. Now remember y'all, this stuff is a phenomenon for a reason. It doesn't always happen. Hopefully what we did with the T-joint will happen again. We've got our ground placed on one piece of plate. I'm reckoning if we weld towards it, we should see that arc blow at the end of the plate. We'll see. Let's hope so. Otherwise, I already showed you what it is. Hopefully you got it. Ow! There's one for y'all. Y'all can have that. Uh, the hood goes down before we strike the arc. Starting to maybe see some arc blow. Oh yeah, no, that's arc blow, baby. Oh my lanta, that's terrible. It's happening, guys. We got it. Oh yeah. It just doesn't seem to want to stay in there. More BBs and buckshot. It's definitely happening towards the end of the plate. So clear as day, y'all. We got the arc blow as we started getting to the end of the, the first rod. We started seeing these big old bombs start to drop. As soon as you see that, you should not do what I did and just strike up and just keep welding. When you see that, at that point, just stop welding. You don't have to do any of that moving or anything. We just start at this end and weld back to our tie-in. That's all we're gonna do for this one little pass. What I want you to do is now clean up the bevels, get that schmutz off, and then we're gonna strike up on this side and weld this way. There's no rule in a 2G weld that says you have to weld left to right or right to left. Take those marks. Remember how I said they're 
they're spread out, spread out, and then they get real tight towards the end, and that's why we have that arc blow. Well, now we're gonna switch it up on this plate. I'm gonna weld this next bead that's gonna be on the bottom. I'm gonna put two beads on, one here and one there. And then on those fills, I'm gonna weld this way, then that way, this way. And then on the cap, all that arc blow is gonna be gone, and we can weld all one direction and make it look nice. You can tell we've got a little bit of arc blow at the beginning there, which makes sense. Sound like the arc blow got on the other side there. Never let it know your next move, you know? And I never recommend really putting the ground that close to your weld. You still want it fairly close. I think that's the best way to have a good ground, but not that close. I'm gonna weld the other way now. Make a happy little tie-in. Never forget the Jimmy. Still a couple bombs being dropped. I think it has a lot to do with that ground being there. A little bit less than before. We're trying to switch things up and make sure that those magnetic fields are at least getting switched back and forth. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I still see a pretty aggressive amount. We'll do this last fill pass and try to cap it all one way to look good. A lot less on that, that start. I didn't see any arc blow on that bead. If there was some crazy, it was a lot less. We're welding a little quicker in this fill. There's not a ton of room left for the cap. See if we can laser beam one the other direction, right up on that top bevel. Gotta weld real quick, real quick. I ain't see no arc flow. Now, if you could tell, we ran this first speed from right to left, and the second bead left to right, and then the last speed right to left. And I've cleaned up a little bit of BBs from the two layers underneath it. Those first two passes right after the root honestly had me nervous because there was arc blow on both sides of this plate for just a moment. But we haven't touched our ground at all, and this third pass seemed to pretty much eliminate some of that arc blow. So now we're going to make sure we Get the cap nice and uniform, all one direction. As far as when you're ready to cap, no matter what process, the best advice I can give anyone is your groove, is your stomach, and your rods, or whatever you're trying to feed it. You don't know how hungry a groove is until you start to feed it. There's no rule that says how many beads you gotta put in it most of the time. Get it full for whatever rod you're using or however much you're trying to fill. Pretty much always do this with a 2G weld is leave that bevel line on the bottom definitely showing because I need a little shelf, something to guide, something to sit on. Whereas that top edge, I wanna make sure it's nice and full so I can avoid any underfill or undercut. That usually is the problem with the 2G position. The bottom side, if you have it too full, then you have that overlap, that roll in your bead. And we don't want that either. I think the arc blows out and we can cap this thing nice. That arc blow, I mean, you can see all these BBs dropping on my Cayman and my up and smoke, man. If it wasn't for this leather and this Kevlar sleeve, those arc blow BBs would just eat me up. Should have put some run on tabs, huh guys? Rookie. I'm probably welding a little faster than I normally would. I don't usually make it in one rod. I usually have a tie-in somewhere. 
No arc blow. Two more, two more. This is a four bead cap. Mm. Four beads on the cap and not a single bit of arc flow. Mm. Give everything a nice power, Jimmy. And I'm telling you guys, if you ever see that arc blow, you gotta stop welding right when you see it. You gotta start to figure out why it's happening and how you can fix it. This is the easiest way that I know how to fix it on a groove weld is just to start welding different directions. If you're say doing a vertical weld and you're stuck to welding only vertical and it's still giving you arc blow, now we've got to start using some of those other methods in order to try to mitigate some of those BBs. But we can see on here, we've got a nice flat 2G weld. We've got none of those big nasty Hershey Kiss BBs coming off or sticking to nothing. Everything worked out perfectly. We never moved the ground. We didn't touch it. We just didn't let it know our next move because we were just all over the place. Honestly, guys, I was super nervous. On that second and third weld, man, it was arc blowing on both sides. I was like, oh man, this isn't what normally happens. I hope you guys found, found some value in this video. If you have that arc blow, man, just weld the other way and then the other way and then the other way. We'll see you guys on the next weld. Now, I didn't clean any of the schmutz off, but do as I say, not as I do. Good God, that rod had a bunch of missing flux on it. Never mind, we get the grinder out. Right to left, all of it. Damn, again? Come on, bro. <laughs>